Well, well, welcome back. It's Liquid Lunch. It's me, Hugh, and Shannon Skinner's back hi. joining us over there. Okay, <laughs> hi. Right, Shannon? Great to have you back. Yeah, it's great to be back here. So, seven years. Seven years ago, I started Extraordinary Women TV here in uh, the studio. Like here. seven years ago today? Seven years ago this month. This month. Okay. September 10th, 2010. Today's the 21st. Okay. Oh. September 10th. So that's yeah. great. Yeah. So, uh, and you're still doing it. Yeah, it's online. That's right. ExtraordinaryWomenTV.com. There you go. Okay. Well, that's fantastic. And what do you, what, what do you, what, how often do you do that now? Uh, well, now it's, I mean, online, I, I just sort of do it uh, regularly, but whenever we, we can, we have a really interesting interview. Um, we had several good seasons at Rogers TV, which was really great. Uh, and then I continue to do it uh, online, so. That's fantastic. Yeah. And And you're doing a whole bunch of other stuff. And I, we've already, you know, we should just roll the cameras and the mics as soon as we sit down because we've already talked about great things and we're going to kind of have to cover them again. But uh, you, um, you've done some traveling and uh, you're doing some wine things and then you were telling me about Swiss wine, which I've never even heard of yes. before. Yes. Well, so I just got back from Switzerland uh, on a wine and culinary tour in the Valais area of Switzerland, which is right in the heart of the Swiss Alps. It was really amazing. And um, so I went there to learn about uh, Swiss wine. You can't get it in Canada. But why did you want to learn about Swiss wine? Because you can't get it in Canada. It is like so precious. Um, the Swiss make really good wine. It's a very small industry. Uh, they only export uh, a very uh, small amount. Uh, so if you want to try Swiss wine for wine connoisseurs, um, a lot of them would will go to, to, you have to go to Switzerland to try the wine. So we I went to Switzerland here. to try the wine. I actually was in Switzerland uh, a couple of years ago covering uh, an event in uh, Geneva called L'Escalade. And I actually was introduced to Swiss wine at that time. Uh, and it was mysterious to me because I learned that, I mean, they, as I said, they don't ex they really don't export much and we can't get it in Canada. So when I came back uh, to Canada, to Toronto, I decided I was going to learn about wine. And so I started to take a wine program at George Brown and I took one class and another class and another class. And uh, next thing I know, I finished the wine specialist program. Um, and then now I went back to Switzerland, armed with my knowledge, to learn about Swiss wine in the valet area of Switzerland. It's amazing. So it's, uh, yeah. So what's the, uh, I mean, uh, is it like French wine or is it different somehow? Very, very similar, very similar to German wine, very similar to the wines of Alsace. Mm -hmm. uh, they're known for the Rieslings. Um, and Are they sort of like Ontario? <laughs> they're better. That, I mean, no, not, not, not nothing against Ontario no. wines, but they're very good. We're trying. But like every like every country has great wines and not so great wines. So. Well, we try really hard yeah. in what's probably not the best wine growing region in the world, but we try really hard. But certain grapes grow better, like the whites. You know, it's hard to do a good red in Ontario, right? Uh, it depends. Like it depends. Yeah. Um, you know, I it I would not want to poo-poo any winemaker. So no. okay. uh, they but probably I bet Ontario winemakers try harder than anybody else. We make world. excellent ice wines, and we're known around the world. Uh, when I start talking about wine uh, in different places around the world, like I was also before I was in Switzerland, I actually um, did a, a a river cruise with Viking from Budapest, Hungary to Austria to Germany, and I tried Hungarian wine. Austrian wine, German wine. It was amazing. Did you get off the boat and go to any wine tasting in Hungary? I did. did you? Uh, in not in Hungary, oh, okay. but I did in Austria. All right. Austrian wine. Really good. Really? See, because I'm somewhat familiar. I did some wine tasting in Hungary myself. Oh, you did? Yeah. And they have a great wine climate there, right? But uh, I haven't heard of Austrian wines. Austrian wine. Again, the Rieslings, uh, Veltliner. Um, so they make really good whites. So, and in, in Austria, I we went up to a monastery, and uh, there's 50 working monks at this monastery in Krems, near Krems, 
uh, and they make wine. They grow grapes. The monks grow grapes, uh, and they make wine, and they raise money for the community. Uh, we also tried apricot wine, so that they make there. So it was uh, it was a really good experience. And um, Hungarian wine from the Tokaj area, mm -hmm. um, and then of course German wine. You know, Germans are really known for their their outstanding riesling. So I had lots of uh, tastings of rieslings. That's fun. Lots yeah, of it was tastings. fun. Yeah, <laughs> it's good stuff. Um, now. You, you're talking about all this travel, right? Switzerland, yeah. uh, the Danube, uh, the Danube. And, uh, and you're and still doing the Extraordinary Women TV. And, and I know you're, these things are kind of all related because you're, you're about helping people, maybe women in particular, to, uh, to what, Shannon? Tell us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel my purpose in life, uh, well, I suppose we all have the same purpose and I believe that we're all here to learn to love um, and with, with that in mind I, I, I believe my mission is really sharing words of love and wisdom and what inspires me th more than anything is travel uh, my first book that I wrote was called The Whispering Heart Your Inner Guide to Creativity and I write a lot about how travel helps our creative um, juices going mm -hmm. and it, it's just it's 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 no now there's some science behind it in terms of what happens to your brain when you're traveling when you're somewhere new and exploring um, it helps it I'm more creative when I'm on the road than I am in my own home and I began to see that perhaps with my travel mm -hmm. that maybe I can inspire others to travel and see the world as well uh, to experience different cultures and people and languages and wines, of course, and food. And this expands our minds and expands our creativity. And um, we develop more self-worth when we're traveling, especially women traveling alone. You know, when I give my workshops on um, unleashing your creativity, uh, I encourage women especially to go and travel solo. Uh, I travel the world a lot alone on my own. Mm -hmm. Um, and I believe that we develop more confidence, more uh, self-worth in ourselves because we're in, um, um, it's kind of the ultimate um, survival mode, really. Mm -hmm. So we do get more confidence in ourselves when we, especially when you're in a country and, and English is not the first language. You're, you're in a country where you can't speak the language. That's even more so. Mm -hmm. So there's... A lot of this amazing world to see, I mean, I've been to India uh, the last couple of years, I went to India twice and went to the Northeast and spent time with the tribes and, you know, went into the jungles and saw, you know, amazing architectural bridges made of tree roots and things that you can't, uh, it really just makes you see the world in a very different way experiencing music and art and from all over the world and I just think it makes us better people and at the end of the day I mean what a great education um, and uh, universe the University of Travel <laughs> you know that's the one thing I've noticed too it's like we get kind of settled in when when we when we live somewhere right where we live and uh, a week can go by and it it seems like no times pass like a week goes by very quickly Mm -hmm. when you're at home but when you're traveling a week can seem like a lifetime uh, because you've just because it's certainly not the same old routine right like every day seems like an adventure yeah I mean it's true every day is an adventure and in fact in, when I just in Switzerland I was just amazed at how easy it is to get around with train and buses the public transportation just to get around the country fast and easy and um, that was that was really eye-opening mm -hmm. so you know there there's easy ways to to travel around um, countries and so yeah I mean it but it does go yeah at the time it may kind of uh, seem a little bit slow because you are absorbing a lot and but I mean I think that's language. part of the appeal uh, appeal part yeah. of the value of the whole experience is that you're really like you're you're really amping up your living you know right. for that period when you're you know on the road I mean and just 
just really juicing our creativity. I mean, your your previous guest was talking about um, how Spain inspired him to become a songwriter, mm -hmm. uh, inspired his music creativity. Um, there was a study that was done some years ago. I can't remember now exactly the 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 source um, that uh, showed that you know many masterful writers write their masterpieces in a country that's uh, in another country and in a country where they don't speak the language so they will tend to go in and mm -hmm. really dig deep into their creativity and their creative um, power especially if you're not able to communicate so well with mm -hmm. the outside world you kind of go inside mm -hmm. and their genius came out mm -hmm. so I think travel is very important um, and you know some people I mean, some people can't really afford to travel, and that's fair enough. They can still travel around your city. I mean, we can go around Toronto to the different communities and try different foods and meet people from different communities, and you still get a sense of you're still traveling, but okay, maybe you're not so much outside the country. Well, you know, you can uh, pretend you're a tourist and uh, just do everything different, right? Right, yeah. Like if you're used to driving, take the TTC and see how easy it is to get around Toronto or the province or the country but and uh, but I have to ask you I mean you're talking about the creativity and yeah. stuff like that and uh, that's an interesting point about uh, you know if you're a writer go to a place where you don't know the language and then you know then you can go inside and get those words out um, Pull out your genius yeah but sometimes too uh, I always think of that song uh, funky town by lip sync you know that one? Oh yeah uh, and why I'm thinking about that particular song is because um, sometimes people, well, like our, like you just mentioned our last guest, Howard Gladstone, who obviously, even though he's not Spanish, he resonates with Spain. And, and, and I think people do resonate with certain places. Um, and uh, so unless you get up, get out and go somewhere, you may not realize that maybe you're actually would resonate maybe be a lot happier maybe somewhere else that's just different from where where we are and I have you ever been uh, in your travels tempted to uh, you know uh, call somewhere else home rather than Toronto yeah I mean I think inside of me I mean I'm I'm um, I think I'm just really a wanderer at heart, I'm a traveler at heart. Because you're not even from Toronto originally. Right? Originally, no, I'm you're not. You're from out west. That's right. I'm from Saskatchewan. I grew up in Saskatchewan. And from there, I moved to London, England. So I have uh, lived, and that at the time I was 20 years old. I think when I moved over to London, so 19 or 20. So I was really quite young, and that was a bit of a shock. Um, but yeah, I mean, when I'm traveling, I'm I'm so amazed at the different ways that people live. Um, just not even a week ago I was up 4,000 meters up in the Swiss Alps uh, at a glacier breathing clean air and I thought to myself man this is amazing like if you can spend your weekends and hiking up uh, in the Alps and just breathing really great fresh air uh, it was a, it was really incredible and people there uh, I was at a um, a, a couple of festivals but one uh, a nostalgic culinary festival and um, people love to embrace their culture and the Swiss culture which is you know not just uh, not just yodeling but you know cheese and and the wine and people coming together and listening to to music and um, you know it, and people that have a, a strong sense of kind of a strong sense of identity mm hmm so it's yeah identity community right community, it's, it's yeah. like uh, yeah you know yeah like you almost feel like could could I ever fit into this culture because it's so especially in the small towns uh, so deeply rooted right you feel like there's some kind of hidden communication going around that you're just not aware of right but maybe we have <laughs> yeah. the same thing here I don't know yeah but um, but for sure I mean I, I think it's I think it's really um, invaluable for education to learn and you know we are um, in a time I think politically where opening our minds to other people is really important and and, and 
you know, un opening our minds to other people, other ways of living, other languages. Um, however we live our life today doesn't mean that this is right for everybody around the world. So wherever that is. So now, uh, so now what are you doing with the wine tasting? Are you like holding tastings or? Yeah, so this is new. This is new for me. Uh, yeah, so I am doing uh, wine tastings where they're educational sessions uh, where for private groups where I can get together and um, help people enjoy, learn to enjoy wine. There is um, a, a lot of people out there who want to know, tell me just what wine do I drink? I mm -hmm. want to go to the LCPO, I have dinner tonight and mm -hmm. I'm serving you know, such and such and what should I pick up? Uh, so at the end of my speeches I started to give wine tasting because I wanted to do something with my education uh, and I'll be writing more about wine uh, on my blog um, in the weeks and months to come but yes I started to do these wine tastings and uh, it's just it's loads of fun so that is something that is new for me mm -hmm. and what do you do uh, like mostly Ontario wines or do you bring in wines from all over the world because there's you you talk about Swiss wine right there's other wines out there that we just don't get like I had some Israeli wine yeah Lebanese wine you know like probably most countries actually if Canada can make wine probably most countries can right yeah and and by the way I mean we have some pretty good wines coming out of Ontario but also in Western Canada out in BC OBC, the Okanagan yeah. um, there's some good wine that is being made uh, is being made there too um, for me, I do blind tastes, so uh -huh. they don't know what they're tasting. That's cool. Mm -hmm. And we taste uh, a couple of whites, a couple of reds from different places in the world, but I would, I would change it up too. Mm -hmm. So that's what I've done so far, but maybe the next time I'll do something different. But I create a theme and um, and we gather. I, I've done one in an art gallery. I've done a yoga and wine. Wow. Uh, night where um, at a studio where we did yoga for 45 minutes relaxing yoga and then we had wine tasting after it was really fun so you should so, you, so you're doing the yoga first instead yeah, of the yes, wine yes right <laughs> it's smart yes because they got the ganja yoga now too right but you do the ganja first okay, and then yeah. you do the yoga okay but well that's a whole go. other conversation okay <laughs> So yeah, and uh, it's it's been it's been lots of fun, and uh, it's just something that has grown naturally. It's grown naturally out of my my wine education, and uh, so I'm starting to write more, and I'll be posting more little wine reviews just to help people uh, appreciate and enjoy wine, but from a healthy perspective mm -hmm. as well. A bottle a day keeps the doctor away. <laughs> Is that what they say? That's what some people say. <laughs> <laughs> might keep a few, might keep more than the doctor away, but you know, hey. Eh? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's great. Okay, so now, like what, can people get in touch with you about the wine tasting? Yeah, or? absolutely. Um, probably the best place to go is to visit my my blog at shannonskinner.com. Um, and then I, I'm posting now on uh, various other sites. Of course, I, I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, I have an Instagram page, but I also have started like a special wine, Shannon Wine Specialist Instagram account just for wine. Uh, so my blog is is probably the best place to go uh, for to, to reach me. Very cool. Now are you going to make your wine? Are you going to grow some grapes at oh. your house and make your own wine? Okay, I got to tell you. Okay. I visited last week, the Dalai Lama has a winery, or pardon me, has a vineyard. Yeah in switzerland in the valet area there are four plants there are four vines yeah four that's it that's all that that the Dalai lama but he owns his property and he owns the vines and it's famous famous people from around the world mostly europe have come and they tend to his four um vines i'll be writing about this uh in the coming weeks but it's special it's the the Dalai lama and the beauty of this is it kind of brings together spirituality and wine so well you know what i think you should sneak a cutting of one of those vines <laughs> plant it in your own garden here in toronto and then you can make dalai lama wine right here in toronto ah yeah good idea okay good i try some of that wine shannon spiritual wine yeah plus you can do the dr emoto thing on the wine the what you know dr emoto 
Okay. With the love, you put love, oh, and right, you put yes. the love into the water. Yes, that winds, yes, yes, that's water. right. You yeah, know, yeah, you're yes. gonna make some potent uh, wine that yeah. can bring love into the world. Love wine. Yeah. Okay, love Shannon. It. So, um, uh, ShannonSkinner.com. Yes. That's where the blog is. ExtraordinaryWomenTV.com. That's My where the TV are. show is. That's right. What, yeah. what? Any other info you want to leave people with? No, I mean, that's it. I mean, follow my, my travels uh, as I, you know, explore interesting places around the world and meet extraordinary people, share their stories, their culture, the wine, the food. Um, and I hope that my travels will inspire others to, to go and see this magnificent world and, and uh, meet amazing people. Open up our minds. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Shannon. Great to see you again and do this great being here thanks a lot and okay. wishing you all the best with uh with that channel thanks Shannon. okay all right everybody we'll see you next time that's it for liquid lunch today unless the swami calls but uh, that might have to wait till next week so we'll see you then that channel.com